Well, thank you for watching the show once again. And um, let's kick off with Telcom. Um, I mean, when the deal, um, you can almost say, were cancelled between MTN and Telcom, a lot of investors were so nervous and they just sold out onto the share. But look at what happened here. First of all, right here at the top, maybe I can take you guys a little bit back because it's actually a nice technical lesson here. When the news broke that there's maybe some uh, dealings on between MTN and Telcom, um, the share started to gain some momentum, that was in July. It went up from 33 Rand all the way right up to 50 Rand. But look at the strong candle, strong bullish engulfing candle, Tiny little upper shadow there, but I mean the share went from 33 to, to 46 rand. I mean, you must expect some profit taking with this. But what I always say to my guys that I teach is when you see these massive candles going to the upside, just be careful because one day it's going to give you a massive candle to the downside because it almost, you get to a point where the, where the share needs to correct itself. So what happened was it rallied all the way here at the top, something happened that had to inform investors to say that something is on the boil and maybe that deal is not going to materialize. The actual fact is that this bearish candle on the 14th of October, that actually gave the hint that something is not going to uh, get right there. Oops, and there's load shedding, let's carry on. But on that candle, that gave us the idea that something is wrong. If you use that candle as your guide, you will see that there was a previous candle that also gave you a hint. And that was that little dragonfly there. And that low there was 43.61. Low 43.61, you knew that something can give because that was an important support. And what happened? When the news broke, the share dropped from 43.68 to 34 Rand almost in one go, in one session. It just shows you that the share lost a lot of momentum. Suddenly everybody got out of the share and the share was sold off aggressively. So what do we do now? First of all, we know now that if you buy on a rumor and you're happy with your profit, lock it in when there's some warning candles developing. And on the other hand, if you now believe that the share offers value, you say to yourself, whoops, there is the ugly Marabuzu candle. And you use your resistance line and you say, okay, there's the resistance. While the share is below the low of 36.75, the momentum is still clearly to the downside. If you believe that the share do offer value and you want to buy it a little bit, then buy it above 36.75, use this as your stop loss and your stop loss will be 33.45. And I mean, then you've got plenty targets to the top. first target will be 39.60, 40 Rand, 41 Rand, 40 and even as high as 43.06 if the share recovers. So that's the big thing. And viewers here decided they love the share, they bought the share, and they did maybe ignore that warning candle, lost everything that they hold on to. Why? Because they were greedy. And that's the old story. I think my biggest job in my office, if you, you have a, a tiny little microphone here, you will hear that I will plenty of time say to somebody, when is enough enough? Are you happy with the profit? Lock it in. You cannot go broke by take your profit. And that's the bottom line. Never be greedy. Just take your money and go if you're happy with the profit. Let us look at United Steel. Um, I mean, it's a massive company and um, the American market is, is under pressure. It's not at its all time highs, but there's early signs that a lot of analysts say that um, Inflation is starting to turn around and things are starting to look a little bit better. So if you look at United Steel, yeah, I mean, the share was sold off from, uh, you can almost say $26.30 all the way down to $18. But now it's sort of trying to find its feet and there's a beautiful, you can almost say an inverse head and shoulder developing here. Yeah? Um, I would rather say it's a cup and handle formation. You can have a look there, you will see. Uh, there's the cut, there's the handle, and above that little level of $20.50, the 
momentum can easily swing to the upside. So what I will do here, if I want to buy the share, I will buy it first of all as close to that level of $20.55. And where's my targets? My targets will be these two wonderful gaps. Because either these gaps were fundamental, I don't know if it was fundamental or, or um, emotional, but what I do know on the technical side is that usually a gap close either today or tomorrow or sometimes in future. So let's look at the gaps. The gap is between 2189, 22.27, 23.61. And 23.89. So you can use these gaps as guidelines, as profit market um, levels where you can look at it. So just if you buy a share, so once again, again, beautiful rounding bottom. You've got a nice setup here. And what do you do? You either decide that you're going to close on this gap if you're happy, or that gap. And the moment you do that, you're happy, unless. You say to yourself, I've got a long-term view on the share. I want to hold it for a long time. Then you just stick to your stop loss and your stop loss will be, um, uh, you are 19.25 is my stop loss here. And then you hold on for dear life and that you hope that it can actually go all the way to that high of 26.34. To be honest with you, I've seen over the years, if you get a share right at the bottom, like a Coca-Cola or a Nike, and it's a good solid company, or a British American tobacco, and the market starts to uh, get in, into your favor, then hold on to the stock for the long term. If you're nervous and you don't like the company and you don't know a lot about the company, put your profit and go, and then you can always look for another opportunity. Let's look at capital. I mean, Capitec is one of those shares that everybody loved. I mean, this share was just going up and up and up. It ignored almost all the technicals, all indicators. It did not even bother. And what do we see now? I mean, it was sold off from 2,153 Rand all the way down. Can you believe it? To a low of 1,500. That's almost a 700 Rand drop in a matter of, let's call it six weeks. This little gap is still open. That is my clue on this chart. This gap is between 2,840.95 and 2,037.26 and Rand. So what it tells me is that if you look at this chart, it should actually move up. And everybody will say, but France, it must go and close this little gap. You are maybe right. It must do that. But there's something else that makes me a little bit worried. If you look at the chart here, look at the beautiful bounce from here, from about 1,552 Rand all the way up to about 1,874. Beautiful rally. But suddenly it's starting to show some weakness around here. It's almost like you can say a tiny little rounding top here. Now a rounding top usually tells you that the share is losing momentum. So for me, I will say... I will look at this level. There was a beautiful hammer candle, an inverse hammer there. Some people will say it is a dragonfly. But for me, that little hammer there, and there's another hammer there, that tells me that support is right at the low of that candle, and that's at 1,776 Rand and 5 cents. If the share starts to be move below 1,776 Rand, we can easily see that this rounding actually show some weakness and the share can actually go lower. Why do I say that? Because if you look at the chart and if you look at the long term chart, I just want to take that out there. And you say to yourself, the momentum is still clearly up. There's not yet signs of weakness. But what I don't like is a high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high. And it can easily roll over and it can maybe surprise us all to come and test that little low around 1,520. Let's look at WeWork. At one point, this was one of the stars of the New York market and everybody loved it. But what happened? From about $8 in May 2022 
$2. Can you believe that where it's now? And I think we may be close to a little bit of a turnaround here because if I look at this resistance line, that resistance line is on the point to break to the upside. And the first sign of strength will be above that two rand and oh, $2.16. While it's above $2.16, it can easily give you a turnaround. But on the other hand, we know now by now, if you've got a company and you don't know the fundamentals of it, then stick to your stop loss and don't be greedy. And where's my stop loss? My stop loss will be $2 and my targets to the top will be $2.40, $2.50 and even as high as $3 in time to come. If we look at this chart over the long term, let's have a look here. I want to show you here what happened with this chart. It just shows you that there was a lot of weakness in this. Look at that. Can you believe that? And I mean, this is now a top company. That everybody believed that nothing can go wrong. This share was as high as, can you believe it, at $13. It's now trading at $2. So what is the lesson here? And I, I, I try to, to emphasize that. When you've got the share, when you like the company and everything is sound and everything thinks okay and you get something like a double pull or these spikes and suddenly it comes down and it breaks the important support line. There was the important support line. If it breaks that, take note of that. It's sometimes better than to lock in your profit and then walk away and then you can rather buy it much lower because it can go lower or it can go higher. Well, thank you for watching our show. Visit our website www.fransdeclare.com for more info and we will chat again.